This is a most important part. It's going to bless you. The endings in your King James Bible that you hate so much. The eth endings. Goeth, doeth, blesseth. The eth endings. They could easily be changed, for example, doeth to do. But great care has to be taken because you're going to lose, possibly lose, the actual meaning. And that's very important. That's due to Greek verb tenses. These verb tenses don't exist in English. For example, quite often the Greek word rendered doeth reflects continuous action. In other words, not just doing, but you keep on doing and keep on doing and keep on doing. Doeth. Do, the word do doesn't imply that, doesn't mean that. Okay? The eth ending that allows for this meaning thus has served as a vital function in the King James Bible. In other words, the part that most of you don't like about the King James is the most important part. Huh! Please explain, Brother Floyd. I thought you'd never ask. The ye, thou, thee, thine. Okay, these words that we find dispersed throughout the 1611 King James, it's shocking to discover the great value these second person pronouns serve. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, no. <clears throat> I thought he was a science math major and a theologian. And now we're going back to grammar. Well, I led my class in grammar also, and in history, what can I say? So, we're going to do a little pronoun. You're going to be glad. This will mean a lot to you. These words, thou, thee, thine, ye, you, they were not contemporary in 1611. They had already passed from being common usage. Okay? So, the authorized version, which is another name for the King James, is neither Jacobean nor 1611 English. It is uniquely a biblical English. What do you mean by that, brother? Well, what we mean is, oops, I did it again. The Greek in the New Testament, like the Hebrew of the Old Testament, distinguishes between the singular and plural forms of the second person. And the King James makes this distinction because the Greek text makes it. And it's the only way to correctly translate the Bible. What do you mean by this? Well, the second person in modern English is conjugated as you in both singular and plural. Now, over in Mississippi and Alabama and Tennessee and Georgia, we solved the problem. You all, okay, there is no problem. But, of course, everybody up north laughed at us. Okay, but <clears throat> here's what we're getting at. When you is given in a modern translation, you don't know if it's to be understood as singular or plural. You say, oh, Brother Floyd, how important can it be? Oh, you're going to be stunned. <clears throat> All the Y words, ye, you, your, are Always, always second person plural in the King James Bible. Always. No exceptions. There it is. And thou, thy, thee, thine always denote the singular. Did you hear that? Now, y'all, y'all, that is easy to remember. Why words are plural? T words are singular. Yeah, yeah, but so what? What difference does it make? I thought you'd never ask. Luke twenty two thirty one, the King James Bible says, The Lord said to said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you. Plural. All the apostles. When you read it, you thought he just met Simon. It makes a big difference. It's different, sir, 
whether I speak to you and say, you need to repent, instead of, we all need to repent. Big difference. Okay? That he may sift you, all of them, as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, Peter. And he goes on to say, and when you've shaped up and gotten things together, help the rest of the boys. Okay, that's, that's the East Texas loose translation. Okay. Are there any questions? Is this not important? And is it not incredibly simple? Look how old some of you are. You never knew it. Okay. I'm trying to tell you, important things about the Bible are easy, and none of the churches teach it. 